Good evening, everyone. Very warm welcome to St. James this evening for our service of Holy Communion. A very warm welcome uh, to everyone who is gathered here in the building and a very warm welcome to all of those watching online as well. Uh, everything that you'll need for the service this evening will be in these uh, booklets. And if I could invite you to join in with the words in bold as we go through the service. And if anything uh, is needing to happen in terms of our following guidelines as we uh, worship together, then uh, our stewards, John and May, will guide us through that. But as we uh, gather together today, we gather in God's name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Could I invite you to take your seats as we join together in the prayer of preparation. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. And so we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May God, our Father, forgive you your sins and bring you to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. Let's stand to celebrate God's forgiveness in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray as we sit together. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rachel's going to bring us our first Bible reading for this evening. Thank you, Rachel. A reading from Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year for you. 
Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13. Owe no one in anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when, became, when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery, and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Chris. Shall we stand for our Gospel reading? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Gospel reading this evening comes from Matthew chapter 18, beginning to read at verse 15. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. 
If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you, bound, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do have a seat, everyone. Our view of time shifts. Imagine telling a three-year-old that they have to wait a whole year for their next birthday. It seems like an eternity. Yet as a year becomes a smaller and smaller proportion of our lives, time itself seems to speed up. Perhaps you've had this thought this week. How is it September already? But generally speaking, our view of time is pretty much a straight line. However, our passage that we've shared from Exodus chapter 12 today, in which Moses and the Israelites are told how to prepare for the Passover, tells us about God's view of time. This is what God says at the very end of the verses that Rachel shared with us this evening. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. In other words, the Passover, God's rescue of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, is not only God intervening in the midst of a situation that looks like uh, failure and desperation, but it becomes the defining event for the people of Israel. And so when God commands them to remember it, that's what they do. But it's not like the people are simply screwing up their eyes and trying with all their might to recall what happened that night when God set his people free. No, they follow God's instructions and they celebrate the ritual of Passover each and every year. They remember, they reconstitute it, they make that event present again each time they celebrate and it becomes a defining characteristic of God's people. It's as if the generation that's celebrating that Passover in that moment are the people that were rescued from Egypt. And so time doesn't always work in a straight line, but it's something where the past has an impact on the present and the future has an impact on the present as well. And in that way, as God's people go throughout the journey that we see them go on over the course of the Old Testament and beyond, that hope, that freedom becomes a bit of a compass to set them on the path that God leads them through. When they feel like they're far away from God in the exile, that is what brings them back, that realisation that the Passover, the freedom and the liberation that God has given them is the defining feature of who they are as a people. And in fact, during the exile, that's when the Passover is written down. It becomes even more ingrained in who God's people are. We mentioned a few weeks ago as we began to look at the book of Exodus together that as our parents in faith, the Passover and the freedom that is at the centre of God's people, the Jewish people, that becomes an imprint, a template for what the church says about Jesus' life, death and resurrection as well. And from the earliest days of the church, Christians have understood that Jesus' death and resurrection is a bit like the Passover because 
It brings the past into the present and it brings the future into the present as well. It's where God's kingdom comes into the world and where God's promises are realised. That freedom that we're told about in Exodus chapter 12, that freedom that is at the heart of everything that Jesus does, is truly world-changing. I wonder if anyone asked you what you were doing today, or whether you'll speak to anyone after you've been here and they'll ask you what you did. I wonder whether your response was, I'm changing the world today. Because that is what we are doing whenever the church gathers to celebrate the Eucharist together. Whenever we share in communion, the Holy Spirit is at work doing that same thing that happened in the Passover, bringing the past into the present and the future into the present as well. Time is no longer a straight line. The past comes into the present as we're invited back to the Last Supper with Jesus and his disciples, with all that Jesus had to say then about the Passover, about how he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, a bit like the Lamb talked about in that passage. We recall Jesus' words, do this in remembrance of me. I was so um, encouraged when I first came to see St. James and to apply to be the vicar here, that it's written on the communion table. That means so much to me. Do this in remembrance of me. I wear this ring on my finger as a sign of a commitment that I made in the past, but a commitment that I live out in the present and in the future. In that way, time is no longer a straight line. And as we gather to celebrate today, we are renewing that conviction that Jesus has given us everything that we need to live life with him. But as well as the past, the Holy Spirit, whenever we gather together, is making the future present as well. Part of that hope that Jesus gives us is the promise of everlasting life beyond death, something that's spoken of as a banquet in the Bible. And so with everyone that has lived, does live now, will live in the future, we are guests of Jesus in the banquet of his kingdom. And when, whenever we live day to day in a way that shows God's love to the outcast, the enemy or the stranger, we are recognising that those are the people with whom we will sit at the table in the kingdom. And one of the things that has been so hard about lockdown is that we have not been able to gather in the way that we would otherwise do. That has been a cost and a sacrifice for all of us here, for so many people around the world, and it's something that not everyone has come back to. But one of the things that we've been able to do over these months is to, to focus a bit more on the past and the future elements of what we're doing when we celebrate together while we can't do the present moment things. And we have a model from that for that from the Jewish people as well. For thousands and thousands of years they haven't been able to gather in the temple to celebrate but still they keep the prayers, they pass their faith down from generation to generation. And hopefully over the last few months, it's been my real prayer for us as a church that God has made us more hungry and thirsty for his justice and righteousness in the world to be people who live in God's view of time in a world that sometimes feels so time poor. So as we're sent out from our service of Holy Communion today into a new week to follow God day by day. How might we live in God's time? How might we set our lives by the hope that God makes real to us in Jesus? Well, first of all, some of these things that we've been sharing together this evening should signal to us that each and every moment of each and every day is a gift from God. And so as we go through the rest of our service today, as we go into a new week, let's pray that God would help us to receive that, to know that each and every moment is a gift from him. 
Second of all, I think some of these things should prompt us to set our lives to a different time zone. And I think that's the real gift of the church's year, the seasons and the festivals that we follow, because it weaves Jesus' story through our calendar. It makes sure that the rhythm of our life is set to the beat of prayer and word and sacrament. And every time we go through that church year together, our prayer is that we would become more like Jesus, that we would grow closer together as a church family. And it holds out a different way of living in the world to those around us. What I believe so much of this boils down to for following Jesus day by day is a radical commitment to the present moment, not hankering after the past or fantasizing about the future, but living in a way that allows God's past and God's future to inform how we live in the present. How we remember and thank God for all that he has done in the past. How we use that as a sure foundation for the present and something to uh, inspire us to joy and hope. Something that makes us deeply realistic in the face of suffering but determined to tackle that suffering head on. All the while rejoicing that death and darkness and suffering can never have the last word. To say to each and every fear that hope that Jesus gives us, which is unshakable. And so today and as we go into this week, let this be our prayer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. going now to stand together and declare our faith in the words of the creed on page 8 of our service sheets. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do uh, take your seats, folks. And uh, in just a moment, May is going to come and lead our intercessions. Uh, But first of all, I wanted to uh, give us an opportunity together to uh, pray for Sue.
uh, because uh, on Saturday, as you might have seen in the notice sheet, uh, Sue is going to be licensed by Bishop John as uh, a reader in the Church of England. And that is uh, uh, an authorised lay ministry that includes all sorts of things like uh, leading and preaching at the front, but also things uh, out in the parish and in the community. Um, and Sue is going to bring all of her talents and her gifts to that role. It's going to be fantastic to have her on the team in a different way. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think Sue's in two minds now, but I know she's looking forward to it, really. But I thought that uh, as uh, Sue takes this uh, next step of faith and obedience to God, um, it would be really good for us um, as a church family to join our prayers with those of the wider church uh, as we thank God for Sue and pray for her as she goes into the next chapter of her ministry. So, Sue, if you, if you could stand up, then we're uh, just going to pray for you. And uh, if you'd like to um, bow your heads or stretch out a hand towards Sue, if you'd like to, I'm just going to uh, pray for her. Father God, we thank you so much for Sue. We thank you uh, for all the gifts and talents that you have given her and uh, even for those that she doesn't know that she has yet. We thank you for uh, the way in which she uh, is a part of our church family and we thank you for her service as church warden and all the other things that she uh, does in our midst. And we thank you that you have called her to be a reader in the church. We thank you uh, for all the times that you've been with Sue as she studied and prepared for this role. And I pray that you would really show her that you are with her every step of the way. We thank you for her and we ask your blessing on her as she goes into a new adventure in ministry. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sue. You can sit down now if you like. As uh, May comes to lead us in prayer, I'm just going to uh, lift up the prayers on our prayer tree. Father God, we thank you for all of the prayers on this tree, and we thank you uh, for all of those people around the parish who have been uh, praying to you in different ways during lockdown. We ask that you would uh, bless all of those in our parish, that you would hear and answer their prayer. We thank you that you are at work in so many lives around us. Amen. Thank you, Payne. As followers of Jesus Christ, let us pray to our loving Father in heaven. Father, help us all in your church to understand what it really means to love and serve you. At the times of step testing, strengthen us. At unexpected and undeserved suffering, support us. At the end of our energy, revive us. And teach us through it all the inexplicable peace and joy that comes from doing your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, have mercy on us for the misdirected use of time, money and resources in this world. In the struggle against evil and sin, empower us so that justice and righteousness are established, upheld and celebrated as hearts rejoice in the freedom of all that is good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Loving Father, as we enter into autumn and reflect back on a year like no other, we pray for many people who have contracted the coronavirus in all parts of the world. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died and peace to those who are still worried, fearful and uncertain. We also pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus. We give thanks for the community we live in and the many kind acts which have helped us through challenging times. This evening we remember those people who live in Long Street, Lower Road and Lutterworth Road. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, bring 
bring healing and wholeness to those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. In the sleepless nights and endless days of pain, give the grace to persevere with patience and turn those dark times into places of spiritual growth. We remember those who have asked for our prayers, Alistair Rowan, Paul Towers, Margaret White, Anne McCree, Pat Swift, Denise War, Josie Bayliss, Molly Frost, Gary Elson, Susan and James, Theo Coleman, and June Quinney. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, may those who have died rest in eternal peace of your presence, their burdens laid down and their suffering ended. We name this evening Patricia Haywood, Peggy Mountford, and Jean Nuttall, and those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, the full extent of your love for us is so much greater than we can ever imagine. We rejoice in your greatness and power, your gentleness and love, your mercy and justice. Enable us by your spirit to honour you in our thoughts and words and actions, and to serve you in every aspect of our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, May. Let's stand together to share the peace from where we are. We celebrate today that Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, for in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And so as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so as we continue in prayer together, let's sit and let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So as we celebrate communion this evening, you're all very welcome to come forward and to receive uh, the bread, or if you would prefer a blessing, uh, just wait for uh, John or May to uh, guide you forward to receive, and if you could uh, sanitise your hands and uh, hold your palms open so that I can uh, give you the bread, that would be great. But as you come this evening, come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have arrived, but because you are still on a journey. Come because you love the Lord a little and want to love him more. But above all, come because he loves you and gave himself for you. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all in eternal life. Amen.
let's join together with the prayer after communion at the bottom of page 12. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for being with us for our service of Holy Communion this evening. And uh, you will have received your uh, church newsletters on your seats. Um, please do have a look through that um, and have a pray through uh, the things in there. Thank you very much uh, for your prayers last week for the beginning of term for St. James and for Arden Forest. Um, I was able to, to go down to St. James to see uh, everybody coming back on Wednesday, which was really good. I think they were all uh, very glad to be together. And I understand that things went very well at Arden Forest as well. So please... Uh, keep both of the schools in your prayers as they uh, settle into the new rhythms that they have in this new term together. And uh, just a couple of other things to mention to you this evening. Uh, next week we will be uh, gathering at 10 o'clock for our service of Holy Communion and uh, Bishop John will be with us then. So please let us know if you're able to come and uh, join us then. It would be good to, to have you all here and to have Bishop John with us as well. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh yes, you'll also see in the notice sheet that uh, we have a date for our APCM uh, this year. It was meant to be in April or March, I think, but um, you know, a lot of things were meant to be in April or March. Um, so it's going to be on uh, Sunday the 11th of October, uh, after the Sunday service in the morning, around about quarter past 11. And uh, we're going to be looking back at 2019 and giving thanks for everything that God uh, did among us over that year and then looking forward uh, 2020 and 2021 uh, where God is leading us next as a church. So if you uh, can join us for that then please put that date in your diary. Uh, there will be uh, positions available for election, there will be uh, elections to the PCC, to the Deanery Synod uh, and to Church Warden as well um, and little sort of descriptions, job descriptions for those will be in the new sheet uh, in the next uh, week or so. So um, look out for those and uh, please have a conversation with me if you would like to find out more about any of those. Um, but the APCM will be on the 11th of October. Let's uh, end our service together with a prayer for God's blessing. Let's pray. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the Amen. name of Christ. Amen. Amen.